Hey friends, welcome back, Kyle here, and today we've got another big grinder comparison. Now today, we're gonna be taking a look at these eight coffee grinders, each of these under $300 US, and today I wanna answer what the best coffee grinder is under this price range. And today we're gonna take a mixture of both electric grinders and hand grinders. Today we're gonna look at grinders that do espresso, grinders that do filter coffee, and some grinders that do both. I wanna talk about which ones are my favorite, which one I would pick personally, which one I think is the best value option and then the option I think is best for most people. Today we're going to be talking about the Urbonic 080. We're going to be talking about the Breville Smart Grinder Pro. We're going to be talking about the Varia VS3, the Turin SD40, the Baratza Encore, the Baratza Sete 30, the Easy Presso JX and the Easy Presso X Pro. Now these are some of my favorite options under this $300 category. But some notable mentions here is the fellow Ode. This is definitely a grinder that I would put in this comparison, though this is the O Generation 1, and this is a grinder comparison under $300. So the O Generation 2, which just came out earlier this year, is more expensive than $300. I don't wanna include a grinder that's already outdated and going to be replaced in this comparison, but we will talk about the O Generation 1 later in this video. Also, any premium hand grinder under $300 could fit in this category as well, but I've actually done a video on premium hand grinders, so if you wanna just check that one out, I'll leave a link for that down below as well, go watch that video. But for me, these two are some of the best value under this price range. Two other grinders worth mentioning are the Virtuoso from Baratza. It's very similar in many of its attributes, so I opted for the cheaper model today to help keep those budgets down a little bit and give you some range in the price range you can spend here. And also the Lego Mini from Option O is one of my personal favorite grinders, though now it's over $300 at $385. So because of that, it doesn't fit in this category, but that is definitely a grinder worth considering. All of these coffee grinders were purchased out of pocket or with Patreon funds, and some of these grinders are gonna be going back to Patreon at the end of this video to say thanks for supporting this video. The only grinder that doesn't fit in that category is the Varia VS3, and this was lent to me from Eight Ounce Coffee in Canada. That being said, they have no idea that this video is even coming out, and they have absolutely no say in what I'm saying in this video. They want to send me this grinder to be able to test and review for all of you. So start off with this grinder right here. This is the Urbonic 080, and this is a 60 millimeter flat burr grinder. Let's go ahead and grind some coffee. Now, flat burrs in this price range aren't very common, and at $290, while not our cheapest grinder by any means in this category, it definitely offers a lot for a lower price. It's cute, and it's very simple to use. You add your coffee up top, you adjust the grind size on the front here. Now, this little guy has a 250 watt motor, and with some of these, we're gonna get a little geeky on specs, and this one spins at a very, very high RPM. Now, it's really hard to get a reading on this, and Urbonic doesn't actually quote what their RPM is, but I would quote anything from 1500 or plus RPMs. This thing spins very fast, and that can be its detriment, but we'll talk more about that when we talk about its taste profiles and the grind consistency a little later in this video. This is the Smart Grinder Pro from Breville. Breville's a massive appliance manufacturer, and this is not a new grinder by any means, but it is their flagship grinder currently. Now this is $199 US, and this is a 40 millimeter conical burr grinder that has some smart features like time dosing, and it also has an RPM speed of 450 RPMs, which is pretty typical for a conical burr, maybe a little fast. And then it has a hopper up here, which can actually detach. It's got all the locking features and all the things that you'd find from Breville appliances. Everything is well thought out. Everything's magnetic, fits really well together. As well as the build quality, it's got the same metal wrap as many of their appliances, as well as like a retractable cord. Now next up is the Baratza Encore. Now this is easily a legend within coffee grinder world. It's over a decade old and within specialty coffee, I'm sure almost everybody's owned one at one point. It's so popular, or at least it was for a long time. And that's because it was one of the cheapest options for the best results for a long time. Now this has 40 millimeter conical burrs. It has a 70 watt motor, weaker than the other options today as well. This one here though is much cheaper. At currently $169.99, while they say it can do espresso, I definitely wouldn't recommend it. The notches are often too big to dial in for espresso. This really is, in my opinion, a brew grinder. While it may not be advertised as such, today I'll claim it as such because I just think it does that well. Anything for espresso, it can do it, I wouldn't recommend it. And for those who care, this runs at 550 RPMs and it's burr, it has six points or it's a hexagonal burr, very similar to many of the other grinders on the table today. 
Now this one here is the Varia VS3. And this one I'm really excited to talk about because it's very new. It's the newest on this table and one of the newest mark grinders on the market today. Now, typically I would probably do a separate review for this grinder, but I thought this was an ideal situation to compare it to some other grinders that are right behind me. So this grinder here is at the top of our price range at $299. This one here uses a 38 millimeter conical burr like its competitors, though the geometry is completely different. Now this one also spins at 165 RPMs with a 100 watt motor. 165 RPMs is slow for a conical burr grinder, and so that means two things. Number one, it's gonna grind slower, but number two, the flavor profiles we experience are either going to benefit or suffer because of that. And we'll share more about that when we talk about the flavor profiles on the VS3. This grinder is also meant to do single dosing. That means you pour your coffee in, you hit grind, and that's it. It doesn't store coffee in a hopper in a traditional sense. So that means you've got a limit of 30 grams in this hopper. So if you need something for larger batches, well, you've either gotta pour it in as it grinds, or this just might not be the grinder for you. Let's unpack more of these thoughts with the VS3 as this video goes on, but first let's talk about the next grinder. This is the Sete 30. This is Baratza's budget espresso grinder and under 300 bucks, you should not overlook this grinder. Let's talk about why. Now, first of all, this grinder is very loud. But what's interesting about this grinder it has a very unique design. This grinder actually spins the outside burr and keeps the center cone stationary. Now it really doesn't matter to you what that does other than it makes it grind really fast and the grind results are very good in the cup. Now, that being said, this is a very interesting grinder for many reasons. You know, many other grinders on this table are made of full metal or partial metals, where Bratzas just aren't. Now again, this is another 40 millimeter conical burr with six cores. It's a 200 watt motor and it spins at 450 RPM. One of the most powerful motors on the table here today. And so we know that it's gonna have enough power to grind for espresso. Now, we're gonna talk about some of the issues with the set day later in this video, but it cannot be denied as one of the better value grinders on the market today. This is really an espresso focused grinder and it can do filter coffee depending on what you're trying to brew. Don't expect this to do French press or coarse styles of coffee. It just isn't gonna do that. In my experience, it just depends on what you're brewing and the coffee. Now next up and our last electric grinder of the day is the Turin SD40. Now this is interesting because it's made by the same people who make the DF64, the DF83, those Turin grinders. This is their only conical grinder and at 40 millimeters and again, a hexagonal design with the six core burr. This is a very interesting design as it spins up to 750 RPMs with this 180 watt motor. Now that's fast for a conical burr. Now that means it's gonna grind fast but it also means it's gonna have some effects on the cup. Maybe good, maybe bad depending on what you like in your coffee, but it definitely is going to affect the grind distribution for our coffee, both espresso and filter coffee. Now, this uses an interesting design that is stepless, but has a locking mechanism that locks adjustment into place. So it actually technically is stepped, but the actual adjustment is stepless. It's a little confusing. I don't know why they do that. It also comes in two different aesthetics. You can get the rounded version, which seems to be more popular. And I ordered a rounded version and it came squared off like this. So that's strange really strange, but I don't mind it. And lastly, we have our hand grinders. And I wanna intentionally add the hand grinders here today because hand grinders are so awesome and they're often underappreciated. Now, this is the Easy Presso JX and this is the Easy Presso X Pro. This one comes in at $130 and this one is $150. Now, we got two hand grinders here today intentionally. One is faster than the other at a 48 millimeter conical burr. This one grinds fairly fast and if you want something for espresso that doesn't take a millennia, then this one might be the option for you. The X Pro, on the other hand, is a seven core 38 millimeter conical burr. It's a very similar geometry to some very premium hand grinders and some premium grinders like the Lego Mini and has a really nice external adjustment for grind size, has a really nice build quality and is compact in the hand. $150 and $130 is very affordable and comparable to some of our entry level electric grinders that we have on the table today. But with a hand grinder, because you're not paying for electronics and motors, you can save on those components and get better build quality and grind quality for a hand grinder for the money. So we're gonna compare these to those electric grinders a little later in our taste comparison. But before we dive into my taste comparisons, talk about the taste profiles with each of these grinders and how they grind coffee, a quick ad from today's sponsor, which is Standard Magazine. Now, one of my favorite things to do when drinking my morning coffee is reading Standard Magazine. This is a coffee magazine about the specialty coffee community. And honestly, it's about coffee culture. Right now, I'm reading an amazing feature in Standard about the Democratic Republic of Congo. Now, every issue Standard features a different 
country that produces coffee or is involved in the coffee industry. And this issue is incredible. Learning about the Democratic Republic of Congo is just something that you don't get to hear about a ton with beautiful pictures and beautiful articles just representing this amazing country. And if you don't believe me, Standard is currently up for a Spreadgy Award for one of the best articles of the year, one of the best writings of the year. Every month, it's incredible articles like these that really inspire me about the coffee industry and I would highly recommend you check them out. You see, not only does Standard come with magazines quarterly, but it comes with coffee from around the world. And it's experiences like these that I really just can't get anywhere else. If you want to try out Standard, I got you covered. Use the link down below and you're going to get free international shipping and coffee with every single order. Standard is incredible. They've been a long supporter of this channel and I thank Standard so much for sponsoring this video. But go out, subscribe. Back to the video. Okay, so this is the point of the video where we're going to do some brews. We're going to taste some coffee and talk about the grind consistency from each grinder. This is definitely something that was designed for espresso. It's hard to say what I love it for. It doesn't make the best espresso that I've ever had. It doesn't make the best filter coffee that I've ever had. As you can see here with this V60, it's a very muddy bed and it's creating a lot of fines, which if you like higher textured coffees or if you like darker roast coffees, it's gonna be a great grinder. Don't get me wrong, it's not a bad cup of coffee, but I think what we'll see is other grinders on this table do a better job for similar or lower prices when it comes to just filter coffee. It's just not really good at separating flavors in the way you'd want from a flatbird grinder. So it's not bad, it's just not, it's not great. I wouldn't say that this is my favorite grinder for filter or espresso. The espressos are textured and thick and gooey, but they definitely lack the sweetness that you're gonna get from some of the other grinders on this table. The Smart Grinder Pro is not new to me. I've been using it for years and I'm very familiar with the flavor profiles that it creates. Now, to be noted, all of the tasting profiles today are not based on today's testing, but over three months of testing flavor profiles between all of these, the only one that doesn't apply to is the VS3, but I put almost five kilograms through that grinder. So I'm fairly aware of its flavor profiles, but the Smart Grinder Pro has an interesting flavor profile. I think for most people, it's gonna leave a lot to be desired. It doesn't have a great sweetness and it definitely lacks the acidity you'd want from a good filter coffee brew. As you can see, like the Urbonic, it does create a muddier bed. I feel like the Urbonic did make a better filter coffee, which doesn't surprise me with those flat burrs. For me, this is a grinder that'll get a lot of people into brewing coffee at home. And it is definitely a jack of all trades. For 200 bucks, you can brew both espresso and filter, but it definitely doesn't do both exceptionally well. That being said, most people are gonna be absolutely happy. And if you're just looking for the best value to get yourself into the market, uh, this might be the option, but hold thoughts on that because we got some other grinders to talk about. For me, it's very uninspiring. If I was bringing filter coffee on this, I probably wouldn't as often. And I feel like a lot of people I know that own this grinder, that's kind of the case. They're not inspired by their filter coffee brews. They don't find them overly delicious. And that's kind of my experience here on the Revel Smart Grinder Pro. The espresso is okay. You know, it definitely has an issue with dialing in coffees because the notches can be slightly big and depending on the style of coffee you're brewing you might not be able to get fine enough as well depending on kind of filter coffee you're brewing you might not be able to get coarse enough the range isn't quite large enough even though there's 60 steps on here so again it's a jack of all trades really not a master of one but this is definitely not my top pick for flavor profiles i've also got to point out that the breville smart grinder pro has a decent amount of retention. As you can see around the burr, it's got this area where the coffee can collect. So without a bellows, you're not gonna always have the freshest coffee. You're gonna need to grind some coffee or purge some coffee through for the best results. There's a reason why the Encore has been the staple for filter coffee grinders for so long, especially in the budget category. I think it definitely lacks in some key categories here in flavor profiles, but it delivers really good acidity. I find the acidity on the Encore, maybe just my experience, to be above average in this price range. It might be because of the boulders that it creates, definitely creates more boulders than most coffee grinders. Uh, and, and the filter drawdowns are not as muddy as some of the other options we saw. Well, they're definitely not perfect. For the price, I think it gets a lot of people in your filter coffee for a very low entry. Now. Don't get me wrong, this is not the best filter coffee grinder out there. It definitely lacks sweetness that I want. It definitely lacks the, the wide spectrums of flavors I'd want to experience in this filter coffee, but 
in terms of acidity, the acidity is there. And overall, it gives a good impression of what the coffee can taste like. It just does leave some to be desired. Again, if I'm nitpicking here. Let's see if this can save the day. Let's brew V60. I like the coffee at brews. To me, this one so far sticks out to the rest. This one has the most sweetness. It's got the most acidity, most transparency to the cup profiles. I can see the distinction between flavor profiles and really what's happening in this cup. I think that lower RPM is helping here as it's not creating as many fines spinning as fast in that burr chamber, as well as the burr geometry, as this one has a very different burr geometry to some of the other burrs, a more modern style burr, and a very different pre-breaker design, similar to what we see on a lot of hand grinders these days, like even the X-Pro. Now, it's not exactly the same geometry, but it adopts a lot of that new modern technology that we're seeing on burr geometries. Here's the thing, at 165 RPMs, this is so slow so slow so depending on your patience level i'm i can barely wait for my coffee to draw down so for me this is an issue uh but for you it might not be i will say depending on the style of roast you would want to do for an espresso i would caution at 100 watts and 165 rpms i have yet to stall the vs3 and i have tried but i do wonder if very light roast would have an issue long term. At 165 RPMs and a 100 watt motor, I would just caution if this is going to be a everyday espresso grinder. I would say this is probably more of a filter coffee grinder with the occasional espresso in mind. This is not supposed to be some heavy duty espresso grinder like something like the Niche Zero or even something like well the Sete 30 which we'll talk about because those grinders have a lot more power and they're meant to grind a lot of espresso at a very gr fine grind setting over and over and over. So for flavor profiles, this is easily the best that I've experienced thus far. It's beautiful and well built, but I'll talk about some nitpicks I have with this grinder a little later. I think overall the flavor profiles are good. I enjoy the cup. It's got some good sweetness, some good acidity. It can do espresso. It's got stepless adjustments. It's got the fine enough grind size where you can grind for espresso. It does it fine, but I just have an issue recommending this 100 watt, 165 RPM grinder. It's very slow, not as powerful as some for everyday espresso grinding. One other thing I noticed with using VS3 is that the texture inside the hopper actually catches beans, chaff, and dust. So over time, you have to clean that hopper more often than other grinders. So I'd love to see that change in the future if possible to something a little more smooth as the texture is just not needed inside that hopper. It could, it could definitely have more sweetness. It's not bad, it's better than the rest, but it's not perfect. But overall for the price, fairly impressed. I feel like I'm kind of sharing a theme here and a lot of these 40 millimeter conical burrs are kind of the same in this regard, but the Sete 30 is good. It makes some good filter coffee, but it's definitely, muddy it's a little less transparent than i'd want the cup profiles to be um this is definitely an espresso focus grinder I, you know the way that it's set up the gearbox the design of this grinder is really focused on espresso and i think it's good it's not trying to be a jack of all trades though they kind of advertise it as one i really don't think it's I don't think it is one. I think it really is an espresso first grinder. Um, it lacks some of the acidity that I got even on a grinder like the Encore, but I feel like the overall cup profile is, is better. It's a little more balanced than something like the Encore. I think it's not as good as something like the VS3. The VS3 had more clarity in the cup. It had more acidity and sweetness that I preferred. I would say that this is better than the Breville Smart Grinder Pro. And overall as a cup profile, I prefer for this to the Encore, though the Encore has more range. So depending on what you want for filter coffee, that one might be better for most people. But if you need for espresso, this is good. And the espresso it creates is good. You know, it can compete with something like even the niche. I highly recommend it. I find the SD40 interesting. I like the grinder. I like the coffee it produces, though I feel a little torn here. You can definitely see the impacts that its high speed has on the cup profiles. When it comes to filter coffee, I actually prefer this over the Sete for filter coffee for sure. And I think it's better than many of the conical burrs on this table. The only one I would say it's not better than is the VS3, at least for electric grinders. It definitely loses some of that clarity and, and loses some of the acidity I would desire from the fines it probably produces from that high RPM. But the coffee it creates is not bad. <laughs> 
It just feels a little muddled and it feels like the diversity in flavors is lacking compared to some of the other grinders that we're going to try in just a second, but also the Varia itself. I think the Varia has a little bit more clarity in the cup profiles. And when it comes to espresso, I find the same. This is able to do espresso. There's plenty of power to do it and the burrs are capable. It just lacks the adjustments because of this locking mechanism. You can just kind of sit it between notches so you don't have to lock it in place, but I find that a little annoying, but it definitely doesn't have quite the flavor profiles that the sete has on espresso. I actually prefer the sete to this grinder for espresso. I find there's a little more sweetness and just more body there that I, I, I prefer. Uh, this one lacks that. So I find it kind of like, again, a jack of all trades, maybe not a master of one, though at 260 bucks, it's a really good value right? And it's able to do all of these things with not a lot missing. I think overall, depending on what you're looking for, if you want to filter coffee grinder with the occasional espresso, the SD40 might be it. It makes tasty espresso, but it's more focused on filter. So these two coffee grinders produce fantastic coffee. The JX, for me, it's not quite as good as the X Pro. The X Pro is one of my favorite hand grinders of all time. The flavor profiles it creates are sweet. They're good, they're delicious. They they have everything I would want in a good filter coffee, especially from like a conical burr. Sure, you have to hand grind it, but that's kind of the trade off there, right? So with the X Pro, you've got good sweet profiles that are balanced with good acidity and good transparency in the cup. Overall, I have very few complaints with the X Pro's profiles. I think they're delicious. And what you would expect from like a premium conical burr in a hand grinder. The JX on the other hand definitely has some, leaves something to be desired. It feels a little hollow. It feels like there's some good clarity to the profiles. <sighs> By no means is it bad and it's better than many of the burrs on this table. I feel like for $20 more, if I'm gonna do filter coffee, I'm gonna go with the X Pro pretty much every time. So now time for the verdict. Let's go through each grinder and I'll tell you my overall thoughts and things you should know. And then I'll give you my overall thoughts on which grinder is best for you. Let's start with your Bonico 80. This is a $290 flat burr grinder and it's the only flat burr grinder on the table today. At 60 millimeter burrs, it's not small. And with 250 watts of motor power, it's powerful as well. That being said, it's got some quirks that I just can't get over. Things like the retention inside this grinder, the static that it creates, you absolutely need RDT. And overall, it's just not the best flavor profiles out of the bunch today. If you want a flat burr grinder that can do espresso and filter coffee, yeah, this would be the option on the table and I think it's the best value grinder on the market at this price range for flat burrs, but you might be better off going with something like the Ode, which we'll talk about a little later. Do I recommend the Urbonic? Absolutely, I think it's a good grinder, but when you compare it to other grinders on the table, you might be better putting your money elsewhere. The Smart Grinder Pro is an interesting grinder. At $200 or $199 US, it's one of the best values for somebody just wanting to get into brewing coffee at home and maybe not caring about all the nuances that we're talking about today, but it definitely leaves a lot on the table. It leaves a lot to be desired in terms of the flavor profiles that it creates, especially when it comes to the filter coffee, and it's not easy to dial in. I find coffee to coffee can be widely all over the place, especially for espresso. That being said, I think it's got some great features for the price and it has some features that are better than other grinders that are much more expensive than it. So I got to give it props there. So if you're in the market for the cheapest grinder possible with the most options, this might be it, but it's not my best value pick. If you want a filter coffee grinder and you want something you can go to some appliance stores and just pick up off the shelf, Baratza has some incredible customer service and it's fairly affordable. These things last a lifetime, they're bulletproof, and even if they're not, Baratza has some incredible customer service to make sure their grinder lasts a long time. So this is a good option for many in that budget category if you need a filter coffee grinder. The workflow on this is a little quirky. Also, this can shift very easily and I find that consistency on the Encore isn't great. While it can get you started on a filter coffee, it's definitely gonna leave you with a lot to be desired. I think it's better than the Breville for the filter coffee it produces, but not by much. I'm giving it some extra points here because I do love the acidity it creates, but it definitely still leaves a lot of sweetness to be desired on these brews. I would not recommend this one for espresso. Now, while the Encore was a grinder that left some to be desired, it was respected for its price range. Now, this one is almost twice the price at almost 300 bucks, but I would say this is a grinder that leaves less to be desired. Yes, it can do both espresso and filter, and the filter tastes 
better. It's sweeter. It has more transparency of the cup profiles. It has some decent acidity. While the beds are still muddier than, you know, a flat burr might be, like something like the Fellow Oat, which we'll talk about, this one still does a good job at making some good filter coffees. It has a great build quality. Everything is aluminum. And the aesthetics are pretty nice. I mean, this is subjective, and you might not like the Varia branding across the front, because I don't, but otherwise, I think it's pretty good. I think it does a good job. Now, this little bellows here is the ugliest thing I've ever seen. But other than that, I think it's a pretty good little grinder. You do need to use this bellows to get the best out of this grinder. Everything about this is really nice. The build quality is all aluminum. Everything is magnets and feels really great. The adjustment is stepless, which is amazing. Dosing cup, magnetic, nice, aluminum. It's compact, though huge docked points on this giant power brick. That should have been, I would have preferred a slightly bigger grinder with this integrated because that's annoying. I mean, maybe not, depending on your kitchen, you might be pro block, I'm not. I think blocks inside the grinders are much preferred. That's just me. Also, the VS3 can be very bad with static if you don't use RDT or some water on the coffee beans. It's really good if you do use RDT, but without it, it's just a static mess. It's definitely similar to something like the Lago Mini. And I would still take the Lago Mini side by side for the cup profiles, as well as overall build quality. But I think this is pretty close. I think Fari has done a great job here. And this is their first electric grinder and they knocked it out of the park. This is better than many grinders in its price range. Again, I will caution that this isn't the perfect espresso grinder. It can do it, but I would caution based on the power and the speed of the RPM. But overall, I think it does a good job of competing in this market. But will it make it into my top picks? That's something you're gonna have to wait for at the end of this video. Now, the Sete 30 is an interesting grinder because for me, this is an espresso first grinder. It's loud, and that's one reason many people should avoid this depending on your environment. Like if you want something quiet, go elsewhere because this is one of the loudest grinders that I have ever owned. It looks fine. It's lots of plastics and it feels cheap compared to some of the other grinders on the market today. And it seems like every year grinders are getting more and more robust. Baratza has really good customer service, which is needed because the Sete has been known to have a lot of gearbox issues. From what I understand, they've improved a lot of that. I have personally gone through two gearboxes on the Sete 270, but again, it seems like they've improved that since I had those issues back four or five years ago. Overall, if you're looking for an espresso only grinder for under $300, this is a really good option. Is it my top espresso option? That's something we'll discuss at the end of this video, so stick around for that. Now, the SD40 is interesting as it's cheaper than some of the other grinders on this table, but it's capable of a lot. It can do espresso and filter and makes good coffee. I think the design is really well built. It's all metal, unlike something like the Sete that uses plastic components. Sure, it's made by a company that's less known, but the Turin grinders have been fairly good and I haven't heard a lot of issues in terms of motors failing or anything like that. The SD40 isn't perfect. The bellows is absolutely necessary. Otherwise, it can have a ton of retention. The burr geometry is okay. And while I prefer the espresso on the Sete and maybe the filter coffee on the VS3, if you wanna have kind of the best of both worlds, this might be a good option for you. Now, if you're willing to hand grind, you're gonna get really good results out of these grinders. The X-Pro for me is my easy choice out of the two, though I would understand if you wanted something a little faster, why the JX might be the option for you. But I cannot recommend this grinder enough for somebody willing to purchase a hand grinder. It's fast enough where it's not gonna be a nuisance. It feels incredible to use. The build quality is fantastic. It's got external adjustments, and overall I have very few nitpicks with this grinder. Now, I've done a full review on both of these, but including the X-Pro, so if you wanna check that out, I'll leave that link down below. But again, if you're wanting a filter coffee grinder, that's a hand grinder, or you're willing to sacrifice an electric motor, this would be a great option. So what is the best grinder under 300 bucks? Well, I'm gonna break this down into three categories. What is the best value grinder out of all the ones that I've talked about today? What is my personal pick? And then which one is best for most people, most of you? Now, first off, let's talk about best value. For my best value pick, it's gonna be the SD40. Now, the SD40 is fantastic and it makes delicious coffee. If you want a filter coffee grinder that can do the occasional espresso, this is my best value pick. At $250, it's just unheard of. And just a few years ago, this would be a dream come true. Yeah, it's quirky and it's not perfect and it's got its flaws, but as a value grinder, this is my top pick. 
So what's my personal pick? I'm gonna have to go with the X-Pro on this one. I think the X-Pro offers so much value. Sure, you have to hand grind, but if you're okay with doing that, this produces some incredible coffee profiles. Again, I would recommend this for people who are interested in filter coffee for home. If you're willing to take a minute to hand grind, you'll be thanking me later for the incredible coffee that you, you taste in the X-Pro, and it will last you a lifetime. There's no electronics to worry about here, but what's the grinder I recommend for most people? And that's gonna have to be the new kid on the block, and that's the Varia VS3. While this might be the best value, and this might be my personal pick, after using the Varia VS3 for a few weeks, I recommend it. It's got everything you need in a coffee grinder, and for most people watching this video wanting to save money and buying a good grinder that can do most things, I think the Varia VS3 is it. I do caution that this might not be an espresso first grinder and more of a filter coffee first grinder. It can do espresso if you need it to. That being said, it's not without its flaws. I would love to see the texture inside this hopper adjusted and it's definitely got some retention unless you use that bellows. Not a ton though, but the flavor profiles it creates for the price as an electric grinder, it's what most people are looking for. And maybe that's what you wanted to hear. Now I mentioned earlier that I would talk about the Ode and this is an important grinder to talk about. If you can find the O Generation 1 for fairly cheap, used, or even new at a lower price range, do it. It's a great grinder. This has an incredible design and everything about it is great, except for the fact that its stock burrs in the Generation 1 had an issue with range. If you are comfortable with modding a grinder, changing the burrs in the Ode, this is a great option. And in the future, if the Generation 2 ever goes on sale, that would absolutely fit in this category. Each of these grinders fits in its own category and a reason to purchase. This really comes down to you, and that's why I wanna hear from you down in the comments below which one you would choose based on your current situation. Now, if you enjoyed this video, if you learned anything, if this was something that was entertaining, or if this is a video that you're gonna share with somebody or maybe rewatch in the future, please just hit that like button down below. It's real quick and it helps way more than you know. Also subscribe if you haven't already, that would mean the world. Also check out the Patreon down below for as low as a dollar a month, you can win free gear, support the channel. Uh, I'm gonna be giving away some of these grinders very soon too, so you can have a chance at winning that. Also, I'm launching a roastery, so if you wanna check that out, we're on Kickstarter right now. We'd really appreciate all the support that we can get. So I'll leave a link for that down below if you wanna check that out, get some coffee that I'll be roasting. I love you guys all. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you guys all in the next video. Peace.